Hello, are you ready for love? You've tried out the dating apps, you've done a lot of work on yourself, and you feel like the same patterns keep repeating, and some of those patterns might even be bad luck in love. So then you come to feng shui on how can I feng shui for love to attract a relationship, and you're likely getting your fair share of mixed reviews. And you're probably wondering, where can I go to get an accurate answer, to get some clarity on what to actually do? And I don't want any of that hokey nonsense. I get it, there's a lot of advice out there and nine years ago when I started teaching myself feng shui, I certainly tried it all and I certainly read it all. Some was a total waste of money, some was a total waste of time, but some of it actually worked for me. In this video, I'm gonna share with you four ways to use energy to attract love into your life. That's a lot of ways. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you a super easy one that actually worked for me and honestly blew my mind. I'm Jeanette Sizikowski, your go-to feng shui consultant. Daily, I'm working with the successful, the motivated, and the inspired to help them transform a life they tolerate into one they treasure. And a life you treasure obviously includes some love. Let's get into it. As you can imagine, nine years ago on the internet, now feng shui is still a niche, but it was even more so a niche. And sure, there were blogs and articles about it, but I wasn't sure what was reputable, what wasn't, what was just like a good marketing and good words for their blog. And so I've certainly since figured out why feng shui works, how feng shui works, and what is actually just some hokey nonsense. If you're anything like me, you wanna know why things work. You don't wanna just be doing things to do things and then like look like an idiot later. <laughs> so through this video, as I share these four tips, I'm gonna be very honest about why I am fairly sure in all of, again, my experimenting and from what I know about how feng shui works, the science behind it, the math behind it. Some of you probably didn't even know there's math behind feng shui. I'm gonna explain to you the reasoning behind the energy and why some of this works. And then I'm gonna give you some and say, hey, go for it. Let's start with number one, BTB feng shui. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I am officially certified in classical feng shui. I use the flying star technique with my clients. And in these videos, 99% of what I share with everybody is classical feng shui because I believe so strongly that it's much more sustainable for success and it is much more accurate when it comes to using specific energy. But I started with BTB feng shui and attracting love is all about being love. We attract what we are. It's all about getting in that love vibration. And BTB, I believe, is really helpful when it comes to the law of intention and the law of attraction. And so if we're trying to attract a partner, why not include it? To quickly clarify, there are many different types of feng shui schools, but the two different big ones that you're gonna come across are BTB feng shui and classical feng shui. BTB is for sure what you are coming across when you're Googling how to feng shui for love, how to feng shui for money, how to feng shui to attract a partner. You're coming across BTB. It's the one that has a tic-tac-toe looking grid and each square represents a different part of your life, whether it's the love corner, the money corner, the career corner, or the health corner. If you want to quickly apply the BTB method, find one of those tic-tac-toe grids, orient it over your home, align the center square, which is career, with your front door, and that will help you find your love corner. In BTB feng shui, southwest, so the back right corner, is always the love and relationship corner. If you're like me, alarm bells are already going off. This is why I graduated to classical feng shui because how can everybody have the same love corner? But that's okay, because we're gonna be using the law of attraction, the law of intention mixed with this love corner. It's going to empower our intention and amplify the energy of love that we're putting out there. So symbolically, if this back right corner, the Southwest, represents your love and relationships, what's going on in that corner? Is it tidy? Are there clothes everywhere? Are there dead plants? Is it messy? Are there broken objects? Is it storage? Is it dark? Look at how this area of your home makes you feel. And then compare it to how your relationships are. Are your relationships messy, untidy, broken, dying like a plant? <laughs> what is there symbolically in your environment that's in this love corner. Tidy up this area of your home. Make sure you love it. Put things there that you enjoy. Give it some care and 
send out that love vibe that you're trying to attract. And you can use these next three tips, three tips in addition to this. So we're gonna, you can use all four of these tips at once. So if that, use that as your base layer and then let's apply these other three. Tip number one leads me into tip number two. Yes, BTB emphasizes this back right corner as being the area that governs your love and relationships, but really your environment is a reflection of your, in, your external environment is a reflection of your internal environment. So really you should just be looking at the whole home when it comes to this love. We attract what we are. With this concept of our externals a reflection of our internal, consider this when you think about how do you treat yourself? Do you have self-love? Do you have self-care routines? Do you have boundaries? Do you love yourself? Do you prioritize yourself? This is probably reflected in your space. Do you have boundaries for your items? You know, are they organized? Do you have respect for your items? Or is it, are they thrown around in the closet and things are broken and things are falling? Do you prioritize your space by keeping it a sanctuary for you, somewhere that supports you and empowers you as you get energy and recharge? Look at how you treat your space and you'll probably get some insight on things that are actually lacking with your relationship and yourself. In every one of my feng shui videos, I could say clean up because we just think better when there's not all this visual clutter everywhere. So obviously tidy up the space, but really look at these areas that are a mess. Look at your closet. I have a video on how to feng shui for your closet. Look at your closet, look at these storage areas, especially look at that Southwest area. It might be your garage and you might see that your garage is an absolute mess. Not a coincidence that you're also experiencing some difficulties in love or messy love. In general, that is true for your home, not just the Southwest corner. We attract what we are. I'm going to say it over and over and over. Here's another thing to look for as a cue on how you treat things. So if you want to attract love, you give love. You share that love vibration. Do you have dead plants everywhere? There's that neglect energy. There's that dead energy. Refresh your plants, refresh, refresh your flowers to care for something, nurture something, watch something grow and blossom and tap into that nurturing energy. And another thing to look for as you just give the love vibration to your whole home, you have, you've given love to the Southwest area to work with that BTB advice. And then we're looking at the whole home here on how we, can we just be more love more frequently. Look at the images that are in your home. These images are always speaking to our subconscious. So what are the images in your bedroom? What is the artwork over your fireplace? Do you have a lot of lonely imagery? Personally, I think that the dock photos where you have a dock leading to nowhere is a very lonely image. It's very neutral, it's very safe, and a lot of people have it, and they don't really realize what's that saying to your subconscious. But for more literal purposes and universal purposes, how many pictures do you have of a girl walking alone in the rain or a girl pondering off to the side or a really masculine man alone? How many, or actually you could go the other extreme as well. How many pictures do you have with like a ton of people where it's all a lot of people, it's a lot of quantity, but there's not that quality love photo. So what are the images in your home saying and speaking to your subconscious? If your intention is to find a relationship this year because you've put, worked on yourself, you've put in the self-love work and you're ready, you know it's the year to attract somebody, then look at the images you're in your home and see what those images are saying to your subconscious. Find a picture and set the intention with that picture. This represents love to me. The third way to attract love into your life is using the classical feng shui method. Now this method, like I said, classical feng shui calculates based on when your home is built, where your home was built, and the direction it's facing. It takes into account all of these actual geographical and astrological factors to know the exact feng shui of your home. Well, I can't do that for everybody here on YouTube watching this video, but what I can do is tell you where the annual energy for love is coming in. I could talk about classical feng shui 
way forever. I love it so much. If you are curious about the feng shui of your home specifically, you can check out my website and there's a link in the description below about the different services that I offer. I have feng shui packages for everybody. I have a DIY package, feng shui for your lucky directions. I have a one hour Q and A with me where you can ask some basic questions in an hour. And then I have the full complete feng shui package where we really go through your whole house and optimize all the energy in your home, align you with the energy in your home so you're getting full energetic support and you manifest your dream life faster. So link for that is below. But let's get back into looking at where the energy is coming in for this year, 2022. In future years, in the 2027s watching us and the 2030s watching this video, I'm sure somewhere I've talked about where the love energy is for that year. But let's get back to the energy coming in this year for 2022. The romance love energy is coming in from the south east so what can you do classical feng shui really emphasizes just using the energy of your space you use the money energy in your space you use the love energy in your space so in the mornings have your morning coffee there and remember thank you come from a place of gratitude thank you my partner is on their way thank you for this wonderful loving empowering supportive relationship that is coming to me and i know it's mine journal here about the love of your life about a future day where you're already with this partner and like what a day in that life looks like i really recommend future journaling oh this morning me and my partner we woke up we hung out in bed for an hour we drank coffee then we walked to the beach what is an ideal day with your ideal partner look like and come from a place of gratitude as if it's already happened to really magnetize in that intention and to really magnetize in that person. Future journaling is really helpful because it gets you in the mind frame or the headspace of what it is you're actually looking for. Remember all of this like energy work, you have to be really certain of what you want. So you can feng shui for love and see what happens, but it's gonna be more potent. It's going to work better if you actually know what you want. So be very clear with your intention. Be very clear of what it is you're looking for. Remind yourself how much you love and care for yourself and you're so grateful for your life already and that you're not looking for somebody to complete you or to fulfill you. You're already fulfilled. You already love yourself you're just excited to share your life with somebody and share your love with somebody be grateful for where you're at and more of that gratefulness gratitude love that you're feeling now will come in your power your energy your intention is 33 percent of the manifestation process and though i don't like to give like objects a ton of power i don't ever want anybody to feel like if i have these metal six metal coins like all the bad luck's gonna go away you know in some of my other videos i talk about that or oh i put this bamboo plant here and that is going to solve everything and oh i have this object and that's gonna make me rich or bring me love feng shui is 33 percent of the manifestation process another 33 is what's going on above whoever you believe in god the creator of the universe astrology all that that's another 33% the timing of life and then another 33% is your positive attitude and your efforts so using that energy is 33% of it and then if it's not an area that you can use maybe it's a wall it's a bathroom it's a closet it's just not an area you go in all the time this southeast area that's the loves coming in in 2022 then you can place an object with intention so you can go back to that Put an image of like a really loving photo that encompasses that feeling it triggers that feeling for you put a picture of the power couple that you like you know like who's a power couple or doesn't have to be a power couple who's a couple anybody even if it's just a random google photo that just you admire and again it triggers that love feeling or you can get some flowers, so some peonies. So some peonies are the love flower in feng shui. So you can place a vase of peonies there. If roses are more your vibe, then roses also work, but put something there with the intention of whatever your intention is. I'm looking to attract love. I'm looking to attract my soulmate. And this object holds that energy of your intention and has it in the southeast area to radiate out that intention and this is where i was saying you can layer all of this advice you can take this same advice for the peonies the roses and intention and you can use it in that btb first example if you'd like and if you want to layer it all in because you know it's your year to manifest love then do it all 
Now I said I was saving the craziest, wackiest one for last. I can't believe this work. It really surprises me. <laughs> and I also just said, I don't like to give objects all of the power for my life. I don't like to think that this object is going to make everything happen or have my fate in its hands. But this one does involve an object. It's going to sound a little hokey, but years later I figured out the science behind why it works, so I'm gonna also give you the reasoning behind why. But you know what, in the spirit of Valentine's Day, let's talk about it, let's try it, let's do it all. Like I said, spread the love. So tip number four is activating your peach blossom cure. So in 2014, I was Googling how to find love, I was moving to a new city, and I was like, I'm ready, I'm ready for a relationship. I hadn't really been in one in a long time. I was like, it's time, let's make this happen. And so I was looking how to feng shui for love, and I came across an article by Radhika Chi, who has really good advice. She does share just a little bit about all the different types of feng shui. I really like her, and she was instrumental in a lot of me self-teaching myself years ago. I worked really hard to look for her article that I, like the original article that I read that long ago and I cannot find it. I, I'm sorry, I'd link it if I could still find it, but I'm going to share with you how it works. But to finish sharing my story, I you look at the year you were born. I'm born year of the horse. And so I, according to the year you were born and the animal, you activate your peach blossom with a certain animal. It all has to do with Bazi and astrology. And then you're mixing all of that with feng shui. Born year of the horse, my cure, my peach blossom activator was a rabbit and you put it in the east. Honestly, I did it and two months later, I found or attracted a relationship that lasted three and a half years. That's a long one for how my previous track record had gone. <laughs> now I said I was going to be honest. So some disclaimers here, you're going to go off, I know, and Google peach blossom cure, and you're going to read all these different articles. These articles are going to tell you you're going to find your soulmate. These articles are going to tell you that it for sure works and it's going to be the love of your life. This person was not the love of my life. Was it a relationship that I grew from? Yes, it was not my soulmate. Did it work? Yes, but I know now looking at my Bazi chart, so this happened years later, looking at my Bazi chart, which is your Chinese astrology, you can look at when are years to put in more effort into love. When is the energy? Remember that 33% where I talked about it's like the stars, the grace, it's like the divine timing of your life. You can look at your Chinese astrology chart and see, is it the divine timing? Is it the good year for me to actually give it my all with love? So for me, looking back on it, the year that I did this was a year where it was very likely that if I did look out for love and work towards it, I was going to get it. And in my Bazi chart, it also did show that it likely was not going to be my lifelong partner. So really, instead of the peach blossom cure, you should talk to me about a Bazi reading because there we can just look at what's the most efficient way to do this. Is this the year to go in all in on love? Let's look at your chart. But in the meantime, you can look at this chart and you can see what to do based on your year of birth. So here we go. We can look at this chart. Look at the year you were born. Just look it up based on the year you were born and ask what your Chinese astrology animal is. I'm sure you've looked it up on a Chinese menu before. Here we go. If you were born in year of the rat, monkey, or dragon, your peach blossom animal is the rooster. And the direction that you place this animal is the west. If you were born year of the rabbit, pig, or sheep, your peach blossom is the rat, you place it in the north. And if you're born in year of the snake, rooster, or ox, your peach blossom animal is the horse, you place it in the south. And lastly, if you're born year of the tiger, horse, or dog, your symbol is a rabbit and you place it in the east. Now you're probably asking, well, what do you mean? I have to go by a rabbit and I put the rabbit in the whatever direction? No, here I actually have mine. This is proof that I actually did do this. <laughs> so it can be anything you want. Use your imagination. So I just found this. It spoke to me. I like lights. This thing lights up. You can find a picture. You can find anything that is representative of that animal. Does not have to be a literal rabbit. I really hope that you guys know that. <laughs> You know, think about a little painting, a drawing on a card. It can be anything like that. Place that intention in the, spe the specific direction. So let's say, I have my notes over here. Let's say that you're born year of the snake, your peach blossom is a horse, so you get a little horse figurine and you put it in the south. 
And then if you'd like, you can face it to the southeast, which is where the love energy is coming in. Or if you're more a BTB kind of person, you can have it facing the southwest, which is that relationship corner. I recommend classical feng shui. So again, the disclaimers, I cannot promise this works. I cannot promise it's going to be your soulmate. Depending on where you are in life, it might be a better time for you to date around and figure out what you like, what you're looking for in a soulmate. So there's so many factors. The reason I am confident and 99.9% .9 confident that it worked for me years ago is because of what was going on in my divine timing, in my Bazi chart, I saw that the element that I needed for love was there that year and so it all just worked out and obviously feng shui amplifies your intention so the power of my intention with the energy of my space with the energy of my timing i had all three factors working for my manifestation and it happened faster so proof that it does work and sometimes you just have to find the thing that works for you so there you have it four ways to feng shui and use the energy in your space to attract love and attract in that relationship we talked about the btb option we talked about just making your space in general a loving space to tap into that love energy we looked at where the love energy for 2022 is coming in and lastly we activated your peach blossom cure in my next video, I'm gonna share with you how to arrange your bed for best feng shui in your bedroom. You're calling in that love, you're calling in a relationship. Your bedroom needs to be a best feng shui, right? I'll see you in that video.